Hello, this is Jeff from Studio 41 Gaming, and we are here with the rankings of 2016. Now, this is a ranking list of games that I've played that came out in 2016. This isn't every game that came out this year. If you're looking for that, well, you're going to have to look elsewhere. But I'm ranking the games that I've played that came out in 2016. This list is excluding remasters, and is also excluding Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, since I do own that game, but I have not even touched it, so I am not talking about that game either. But we've got 17 games to go through, so let's get going. At number 17, well, this isn't a cliche. I hate Madden 17. This is the worst Madden game I have played since last year's Madden. The catch system is still broken. Uh, new dra the new draft system they're supposed to be putting in is absolutely terrible. The rankings, it'll derank players that are like first round. You know, first round talent drops to like the fifth round. That's normal, but we have nothing that, no fifth round talent that's a second round talent, nothing like that at all. This is, the newest entries in Madden have been so, so terrible. And they were on a roll for a little while, but these games suck. Just do not go near this Madden game. Next. Oh, I am going to piss some people off with this, but Battlefield 1, I am so let down by this game. Battlefield 1, I was getting this for the single player alone. I've never been a big fan of Battlefield's multiplayer at all. So, when I went into Battlefield 1, yes, historical game, yes, you can see my past videos on it. Yes, historical, it's everything I've ever wanted. I've wanted a World War 1 game, but this game's single player is, it's set for... FPS single players back 15 years. Back to the Medal of Honor days where it's you versus the world. And that's exactly how Battlefield's 1 single player is. It is you versus the entirety of whatever army you're facing. Good luck. You have to do everything. You're not, you're rarely, rarely ever fighting as a unit with other people. But the biggest letdown is the mission choice. Yeah, I get to go play with Lawrence of Arabia for three entire two second cutscenes. But where's the Battle of the Somme? The Battle of the Marne? I mean, where's the trench warfare? That's what defined World War I, and we have nothing of it. It speaks a lot when the tutorial is the best part of your single player. Because I freaking love that tutorial sequence. I was scratching my head as to why it was only five minutes long. But Battlefield 1, for me, remember this is my opinion, was a massive letdown. And just if you're looking for Call of Duty 2 as basically World War One, keep looking because it is not this game. Next. Alright, so you may have noticed I don't have gameplay for the last two games. Well, that's because I never owned them long enough to give a two shits. But with Tom Clancy's The Division, I can't even play this game right now because Uplay has locked me out of my account. This is going to be less of a Division review and more of a fuck Ubisoft and everything Uplay ever stands for rant. Because I can't even log into my Uplay account to play Tom Clancy's The Division. Like, <laughs> they, have, they set up this two-step verification thing for my account that I never signed up for. I literally can't even get to Ubisoft's support thing right now because it requires my two-step verification that I don't have. So, fuck Uplay and fuck Ubisoft. Because I can't even play this game that I own. Oh, but Division itself is pretty freaking mediocre. It's basically third-person shooter Destiny. <laughs> I was very afraid that was going to happen, and it happened. Except Division actually has something resembling a story. So it, for that, it's a little bit better than Destiny, but it is nothing worth really spending much time on at all. Uh, let's get on to the next one. Oh, if I didn't piss people off with Battlefield 1, here comes Overwatch. Because Overwatch is a big letdown for me. There's no single player, no backstory to any of these characters in the game. I know you can look around on YouTube and might be able to find some videos Blizzard put up. But I don't care about that at all. I want my story to be in the game, not something I have to go look for. So the entirety of this story that is supposed to be with Overwatch just makes me scratch my head big time. That and the gameplay just gets really repetitive. 
this game does not have anything near the size of a roster it probably should have. Because even with a game like Smite, yeah, it's multiplayer only, but have you seen the amount of heroes, or I guess in this case it would be gods you can play as? So Overwatch just, for me, does not do anything real special. It can be fun to play with friends from time to time, but if you're queuing single, good luck, because the people you play with 90% of the time are complete idiots. So Overwatch, not high on this list at all. Well... It's high, but for all the wrong reasons, if you want to look at it the other way. Next. Oh, man. Shadow Warrior 2. I have never been on a hype train and off a hype train so fast in my life. Okay, except for maybe Destiny. But Shadow Warrior 2. The first couple hours I spent with that game were amazing. Then everything after that has just been one head scratch after another. This game gets insanely repetitive after a while it is worse than really any other game i've ever played you go and you you basically see everything you can do in this game in the first five seconds then after that it's just basically beating your head against the wall it has an action rpg loot system but you don't get you know any actual armor or really any weapon upgrades you do get some weapon upgrades but they're so few and far between and they really aren't epic like you would think in a game like borderlands so shadow warrior 2 just ends up being really disappointing to me i might go back and revisit it from time to time but it's if you're looking for ninja borderlands keep looking next i've already reviewed recourse i'm going to try and keep this short and you're going to see some reviews plugged in this so if that bothers you too bad but ReCore is a really fun time, and just because it's cheap does not mean it's a bad game. ReCore just needs a little bit more fine-tuning, and I really hope Phil Spencer gives these guys another shot, because ReCore has the makings of an amazing new IP. And ReCore 2, if they can clean some things up and make these dungeons, these platforming dungeons, a little bit easier, because, God, they are Dark Souls-level difficult. Just make these things easier, clean up the gameplay, Record 2 could be goddamn amazing. So, Phil, please give these guys another shot. And I definitely recommend giving this game at least one playthrough. Next. So, Civilization 6 is kind of a curious quantity for me because I outright started not liking this game because of one big thing, and that is the amount of micromanaging that you have to do with your builders and your different districts since they changed how cities work a decent bit in this game. But... Civ 6, I initially did not like it, but I actually, when I'm ready to record footage for this, I end up playing for like three hours. Just something started to really click with me. And I think it was because I got into a war with France and I saw that everybody didn't like me. So I was like, ah, I gotta go and beat the shit out of some Civ's AI. So I have started to like it a little bit more. If there's one thing that could be moved with this list it's that Civ 6 could end up being a bit higher than it is now but I do recommend giving this game a shot if you like Civ 5 I initially didn't like Civ 5 a whole lot either but this game really added the depth of Civ 4 back in that I really wanted so I think this could end up being better than Civ 5 honestly I should spend some more time with the Civilization franchise since it is one of my favorite franchises and I don't really talk about it much on this channel but Civ 6, give it a shot. Next, Titanfall 2. Uh, this game should have been so amazing, but this, some head-scratching design decisions just make it feel a bit inferior to me anyways than Titanfall 1 did. Again, this is a game I reviewed, so I'm keeping this short. The single player is pretty nice, but ultimately not amazing. Then the multiplayer, just there's the maps just really do not click with me the same way Titanfall 1's maps did, and Titanfall 1 has some goddamn amazing maps. Titanfall 2, though, just, it's not nearly as good as Titanfall 1 for me. I will still play it, but, yeah, it's kind of a disappointment. But, uh, again, it's just me. Next, Final Fantasy 15 is the newest release on this list, and as a result, I admit I have not beaten it yet. But, so far, it's not bad, but there... Something with it is just not totally clicking. I'm not sure if it's the story or what. The uh, combat is freaking amazing. I will say that right now. It is a ton of fun. But something just with this game, I 
cannot place my finger on it. Uh, it's just something does not feel right. It could be the kind of mixture of open world and linear that is kind of conflicting. Like you can't go anywhere you want, but sometimes you can. So that kind of annoys me. But something with it is just not right there for me. And it's kind of nagging at me. And it's a bit annoying because I can't really put my finger on what it is. But something with it just doesn't feel right. There's a lot to like and there's some things that just really make me scratch my head with Final Fantasy XV. Ultimately, if you like the newer releases, I think you'll like this one. But if you are the hardcore turn-based or die uh, kind of person, you probably won't like it a whole lot. So give it a shot, but kind of don't give it a shot if you're kind of the old school fan. Next. So go check out this review if you want some more details. But Pokemon Sun and Moon, there's a lot to like about these games, and there's some things that just makes me want to beat my head against the wall. Such a nice open world, and it's turbo linear all hell, and you have a freaking Pokemon in your Pokedex that can somehow communicate with you, and it's telling you exactly where to go. And by the way, let's block off everywhere, so you have to go in this designated area, so you don't apparently get fucking lost. But Pokemon Sun and Moon... Good things about it, bad things about it. I, I'm i still not sure if it's a disappointment or not. I would say it's probably at least a little bit of a disappointment. But you'll just give it a shot. I, it's definitely not a bad game. It's just not quite what I was hoping for. Next. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. God damn, I was ready to worship this game. The first few hours of this game are jaw-droppingly amazing. And then you hit the second night and you have to freaking stealth through millions of police officers who continually change their pattern just a little bit in between missions. So you have to almost completely redo your stealth every time you encounter them. So that one part singularly almost made me then hate this game. <laughs> but the game also has a ridiculously short running time and you can tell Square Enix is basically saying hey buy the next game if you want the actual story and the actual ending so there's a lot to like about Deus Ex Mankind Divided and there's some things that just make me really question what the hell Square Enix is doing to such a fantastic franchise so definitely give it a shot but you know, I'd wait for a discount next Quantum Break, god damn, <laughs> this is a great story. The story in Quantum Break is awesome. It's just too bad the gameplay is really stale and really generic. Honestly, the so many of the abilities you get in Quantum Break are so superficial. And once you get the time run later in the game, you can basically snap this game in two and never use another ability you unlock before that ever again. And that's really what I think, uh, why uh, Remedy added all those abilities in, is so you didn't have the time run just from the very start, because it's like, oh, you have this, no need for anything else in this game. So, the story in Quantum Break, though, is really, really good. The uh, twist at the end made me just, I just sat back, I was like, what the fuck just happened? But... God damn, these guys know how to write some awesome stories. It's the same way with uh, Alan Wake. Even though I don't feel this game is as good as Alan Wake is. But Quantum Break is a fantastic game. You've got to try this game at least once. Next. Heading into the top five, we got Hearts of Iron 4. Holy shit, this game is awesome. I haven't played it too much recently, but I think that's more of a fear of if I start playing it, I'm almost morally required to play for about the next five hours. So, Hearts of Iron 4 is one of the greatest strategy World War II games I have ever seen. You can play as anyone you want, and while the tech trees for like the lower, not big players in World War II, like the lesser countries, isn't amazing, you still feel the effects of World War II in everything you do no matter who you're playing as in this game and really that is what I've really always wanted from a strategy game is in World War II if I play as this country that's you know let's say Ecuador uh, can I like you know join the Axis or join the Allies and become a big player in World War II 
And in Hearts of Iron 4, you can do just fucking that, and it is amazing. Freaking next. Gears of War 4 would be higher on this list, but it is it just hasn't had the lasting power that I really was hoping it would have. Again, I talked about this game a bit more in my review, so I'm going to keep this short. But it does have an awesome horde mode. I really enjoyed the single player. I suck at Gears multiplayer, so it's I've never been a big fan of that. But it hasn't quite had the lasting power I was hoping it would have, like Gears of War 2 or 3. But it's still a damn good time when I do play it. So if you like Gears 1 through 3 and hate Gears of War Judgment, you will love Gears of War 4. Next. Alright, this is an expansion. I admit that, but this is my party. So I will put Witcher 3 Blood and Wine on here because it is longer than most games on this list. <laughs> but Witcher 3 Blood and Wine, yeah, it's using Witcher 3 system, so those are all there and amazing as accounted for. But the story is awesome. The character read just really carries the story in this game because the main antagonist, Detlaf, he is a bit of a... Uh, he just doesn't do much. You have a ton of people telling him what he is and what he does, but then he doesn't really, you know, he doesn't communicate it himself. So that's why I feel that this isn't quite, if if Detlef had been a better character, this would be number one on this list, but Detlef just doesn't quite carry his own weight, so this ends up being a little bit down, but still an amazing expansion, and goddamn Detlef's final boss battle. Holy shit. <laughs> I was playing that, and it was just like CD Projekt Red really wanted to go out with a bang because this boss battle is taking me so long, but I don't care. It's like, you are if you want to beat this, come on. Come on, keep working for it. Keep working for it. Come on, you want it. You love this game, so I don't care. This expansion is amazing, and Witcher 3 ends as one of my favorite games of all time. Next. Surprise, surprise, I haven't talked about Forza Horizon 3 on this channel at all, but god damn, this game is amazing. I am not a huge fan of driving games. Let me say that right now, but I believe Forza Horizon 3 is the best driving game ever created. Better than Mo Forza Motorsport, better than any Gran Turismo game ever made. Fuck the haters, this game is amazing. Yeah, I know the entire scenario of you being the president and having your own, well, president of the Horizon Festival, I should say, and running your own festival kind of seems a bit corny considering you're going out and doing all the work for the festival, but I don't care. It works. The driving is just so amazing. There's so much shit you can do in this game, and then going and doing co-op campaign with your friends is just a blast every time, so... If you own an Xbox, this, Gears of War 4, Quantum Break, buy them. Because they are all awesome. And Forza Horizon 3 is sitting as freaking king of the mountain for the Xbox One right now. Very possibly the best game that has come out on this system. Next. And after the big surprise, there are no surprises here. Doom. Holy shit, this game is amazing. If you have not played Doom yet and you like FPSs, you need to remedy that freaking yesterday. Buy this game. I don't care. Buy it, steal it, just play the damn thing. It is amazing. One of the best FPSs I have ever played. One of my it's going to be one of my favorite games of all time. Doom is just con it's criminal how amazing this game is. This is one of the best first person shooters ever made I kind of find myself at a loss for words at how awesome it is but you just have to play it yourself to freaking experience everything that is with this game just do yourself a favor play Doom the new one <laughs> go, don't go play Doom 1 and then wonder what the fuck this game is terrible graphics but PC is I believe the best way to play Doom if you have the rig that can run it like mine at 144 FPS, it's a whole other fucking game because it is just beautiful. Beautifully evil. Play this game. 
Just just play it. That's all I can say. This is Jeff from Studio 41 Gaming. God damn, 2016. Even if I don't like every game on this list, I will not forget this year in gaming for a long while. It has been it has been a good year for games in 2016. I will say that right now. Thanks for watching.